Good morning, Heartland. Welcome to day 11. Can we all just stand to our feet and worship together? Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see you this morning. Welcome to day 11 of prayer. We have made it to the halfway point. We have made it to the hump of prayer, the, the hump day of prayer. We made it. <laughs> if, <laughs> if we have not met, my name is John Harris, and I have the privilege and the honor of serving as the worship pastor here at Heartland Church. Before we get into our message this morning, I have to shout out our pastor, Pastor Darren and First Lady Lurie, for leading us so well through this teaching of fasting. How many people have learned something new and something fresh about fasting in this season? Let's raise your hand. Amen. It's been awesome. It's been an awesome season of prayer. Listen, I want to get right into the message this morning. I'm so excited to continue the conversation about fasting. So there is a quote that we have used that I would love them to bring up on the screen. And let's just read it together out loud. If we can, yeah, you can be seated. I'm sorry. I'm just going to stand up. Just... Sorry, y'all, sorry. So it says, fasting is the deliberate abstinence from physical gratification for a greater spiritual goal. And uh, we talked about fasting to know God, fasting to find freedom. Fasting to discover our calling, fasting for vision, fasting for compassion and justice. It's been a few more. Today, I would like to talk about fasting to lift burdens. I'm sure that most of us in the room have experienced what a burden feels like. 
There may be some of us in a room this morning who are experiencing a burden. A burden is a heaviness. It is a sadness. It is a mourning. It is a discouragement. Sometimes a burden can keep us up at night. And sometimes a burden can keep us from getting out of the bed in the morning. I, I liken a burden to somebody who's walking through mud and they have 50 pounds of weight on their back. A burden has a way of slowing you down to the point of inactivity. It's like you don't want to do anything when you're burdened. You're just stuck in neutral when you have a burden on your back. When we're burdened, we can be burdened for a number of things. The passing of a loved one, a medical condition or a medical diagnosis, the sudden loss of a job, an unexpected financial responsibility, a failed or a broken relationship, a painful experience that happened to somebody very close to us. There are so many different things that can burden us. But the experience of carrying a burden is the same, which is what? When you carry a burden, it is heavy. In the Bible, it talks about burdens and what we are supposed to do when we're carrying a burden. In the book of Isaiah, this is what it has to say about it. Isaiah 58, 6. Is this not the fast that I've chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your reward. So the scripture is clear that when we are carrying a burden, we should fast and pray. There's a story in the Bible, in the book of Nehemiah, that talks about someone who is carrying a burden and what they do about it. Chapter 1 of Nehemiah, we find that Nehemiah has a great burden for the children of Israel. They've been exiled from Jerusalem by the Babylonians. Nehemiah happens to be the cupbearer to the king. So, Nehemiah is in a position to not only help the people of Jerusalem, the people of Israel return to Jerusalem, but also help them rebuild the city. But first, Nehemiah goes to the Lord in prayer. And this is what he says. Chapter 1, verse 3. The survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and I wept. And I mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Can you see in this passage how deeply burdened Nehemiah is for his people? Have you ever been deeply burdened about something? And what did you do when your burdens had you to the point where all you could do was sit down and cry for many days? Here's what Nehemiah did. He prayed this. I pray, Lord God of heaven, O oh great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant which I pray. I love how he started this prayer. He was burdened for his people. He had been weeping and mourning for days. He was desperate for God's help. But he didn't start with woe is me. What did he start with? He started by acknowledging the greatness of God. When we're carrying a heavy burden and we need God's help, this brings me to my first point. You have to worship God first. Nehemiah says, oh, great and awesome God, covenant-keeping God. He put his focus on God's attributes and not on his problem. And I think a lot of times, I know for me, a lot of times we get it backwards. The first thing you want to do when you approach God's throne is tell God how big your problem is. Nehemiah got it in the right order. Nehemiah understood that we serve a great God, so there's no burden that is too great for him. Nehemiah understood that we serve a problem-solving God, so there's no problem that is too complex for him. When he was faced with the spirit of heaviness, he put on a garment of praise. Nehemiah exemplified perfectly that when you are burdened, 
and you are desperate for God to change your situation, always remember to approach his throne with worship. So he continued his prayer. Verse 6 says this, I confess the sins of the children of Israel, which have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you have commanded your servant Moses. So Nehemiah starts out with worship. And what does he do next? He doesn't, he doesn't even get to his request next. What does he do next? He asked God for forgiveness of his sins. He bows his head and he acknowledges the many reasons why he is not worthy to receive what he is asking for. And that brings me to my next point, which is when you are when you're bringing a burden before the Lord, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Can we be honest for a minute? I know personally when I am burdened, I come to God and I'm like, God, why is this happening to me? Why is this burden happening to me? I've, I've been praying. I've been doing what you've asked me to do. I've been a good Christian. Why is this happening to me right now? And we come to God and we complain. In our pain and our discomfort, sometimes we forget that nobody is exempt from trouble and difficult situations. How strongly would it move God's hand if in the midst of our pain we worshiped him and we asked him for forgiveness for our sins? So, Nehemiah continues his prayer. He says this, remember I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses. If you're unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast to the farthest part of the heavens, yet I will gather them and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. He worshiped God. He asked God for forgiveness. And the next thing he did was he reminded God of the promise that he made to Moses. And that brings me to my final point, which is when you're burdened, you cannot tell God your problems. You have to pray God's promises. Pastor Darren says it all the time. You have to pray God's promises. God always performs the words that he has spoken. So it's our responsibility to remind him what his word says. When we're sick, by his stripes we are healed. When there's a financial need, the righteous are never forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. When there's loneliness or anxiety, God will never leave us nor forsake us. When there's a passing of a loved one, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. For every burden that we face, there is a promise from God to cover that burden. So, we find out at the beginning of chapter 2, that God answers Nehemiah's prayer. God allows Nehemiah to have an audience with King Artaxerxes. And what does the king do? He grants Nehemiah the resources and the protection to go and rebuild the city of Jerusalem. God lifted Nehemiah's burden. But the text reveals something interesting. If you study the passage carefully, you'll find out it was roughly four and a half months before God brought Nehemiah's answer. So here's my question this morning. When you fasted, when you've worshiped God, when you've humbled yourself, and when you've prayed God's promises, what do you do if you have to wait for your answer? And if you have to wait for the burden to be lifted, what do you do? I have a story for you. So we have a member on our worship team. She just so happens to be the children's worship director. Her name is Kim Wooten. She's actually standing on the stage this morning. <laughs> she coordinates worship in all of our kids' environments every Sunday. And, and once every month, she holds a special children's worship development, teaching kids how to worship, what worship is, and she even teaches kids how to lead worship. We are raising up a generation of worshipers, the next generation of worshipers in our kids. 
At one of the development sessions, she brought in heavy rocks for the kids to hold. And she had them hold them up. And this is what she said. Do you know what this is? It's a rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what is it? It's heavy. Right. It's so heavy. Do you know what it's called when you're holding something that is heavy? A burden. What do we do with the burden when a burden gets too heavy? We lay our burdens down and we lift our hands up. Amen, amen. All I'm saying this morning is, though it seems like you've waited so long for God to answer your prayer, fight the urge to carry the burden any longer. Lay your burden down and lift your hands up to God. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning. Some of us are carrying burdens right now as we sit in this room. God, in this moment, we lay our burdens down and we lift our hands up to you. We lay them down and we will not take them up anymore. God, we offer our hearts to you this morning. We open them up and we hold nothing back. And as we go into a time of prayer, we ask that you would lift every burden. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. It's time for individual prayer. Please come. Please grab a prayer card. Please take a look at the post-it notes on the walls. Let's go before the Lord and lift up every burden to him and come back at 645. Thank you. bow our heads and pray together this morning. Let's just pray the word of God. Gracious and kind Father, we love you this morning. Before we ask anything of you this morning, we give you worship and we give you praise for you are worthy. There is no one like you. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. You are great and you are greatly to be praised. We thank you, Lord, for being the great burden bearer. In your words, you encourage us. Come unto me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So this morning, Lord, we come and lay every burden at your feet and lift our hands to receive what you have for us. We lay down the burden of lack and we lift our hands to receive your provision. We lay down the burden of anxiety and loneliness and we lift our hands to receive your peace and your presence. We lay down the burden of sickness and we lift our hands to receive your healing. We lay down the burden of depression and we lift our hands to receive your joy. We lay down the burden of grief and we lift our hands to receive your comfort. Lord, we thank you that you are the lifter of every bowed down head. We thank you that you are the mender of every broken heart. We thank you that you are the great restorer, that you can restore something back to its original state. We thank you that you are a covenant keeper. We thank you that you always keep your promises. 
And Father, we come now asking your forgiveness for any burdens that we inflicted upon ourselves, any heavy loads that we brought upon ourselves. We lay them at your feet and we lift our hands in repentance to you. Your word says that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We ask now that you would wash us clean and give us a fresh start. Right now, we lay aside every weight that so easily besets us and we press towards the mark for the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Father, we are confident that every promise that you spoke over us will come to pass for you watch over your word to perform it. We are fearfully and wonderfully made so we don't have to walk in insecurity. You are our shield so we don't have to walk in fear. You fight our battles so we don't have to try and control every outcome. You are our help so we don't have to do everything in our own strength. You are our righteousness, so we don't have to try to be perfect within our own selves. Father, we lift ourselves to you this morning. We lift our hearts to you this morning, and we ask that you would have your way. Lord, as we fast and as we pray, we ask that you would lift every burden, and we ask that you would do a new thing in us. Let it start in us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, everybody. Aren't you proud of John today? What did he do? Such a good job. Let us lay aside every weight that hinders us, right? And then press on towards the high calling. We got to get our eyes off of the little problems and get our eyes on the bigger vision that God has for us. So today, what do we do? We lay our burdens down and we lift our hands up. I don't think we'll ever forget that picture, right? And Kim Wooten, thank you for teaching us all that. If you can teach a child that, you can teach all of us as well. So, so grateful that you came out this morning. It is the middle of the 21 days, and it's like so great. I mean, I'm gonna tell you that the next few days, just start expecting God to speak to you. I mean, you've been pressing in, you've been getting close, you've been laying burdens down, but I've just come to know from experience that the clarity starts to increase because we've put the time in with God. And he says, if you draw close to me, I will draw close to you. And expect that, be ready for it. We're gonna have a great day tomorrow. I have a great word for you. Another one of these things I've never preached on before, so it's going to be fun. So come on back tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Go have a great Wednesday. Love you. God bless you.